here. What's up you guys? Welcome back. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, uh, it's a bit of a more serious tone. We've got two videos left to go guys. Two videos. After these two, I don't know when I'm going to be coming back to the camera. I'm taking a full month off, I've decided. It's going to be at least three weeks, if not a month. Look, we're coming into New Year's. I mean, 2020. What are your goals? I've got some goals. I'll probably tell you about them on future videos, but not today. Today, today we're looking at a special, it was made at the start of 2017, it's called, well, it was an Emmy winner, actually, and it's called Life After Football, and it's, it's a subject that I'm extremely interested in, you know, not just with football, but with rugby, any professional sport, any, any, any career, I guess, that, that, that produces adrenaline, um, whilst you're at the top of your game, any profession that you, I guess, perform in front of thousands and thousands of people, any profession that you gain great praise from the public whilst you're obviously doing well. I'm extremely interested in how those athletes transition to life after sport and how those athletes deal with the fact that they're not going to get that high ever again. Especially the athletes that don't necessarily have a career after football. I mean the guys who, you know, they would have been extremely awesome players, they would have got amazing feedback and amazing uh, you know acclaim when they're at the top of their game but once they stop literally that first year after retiring they're not playing they're not in the limelight they're not getting those messages of support it must be extremely extremely hard depressing so look guys I'm not gonna say anything else we're gonna get into this I've been looking forward to watching this for a long time it's been sitting on my desktop for probably about a week. I wanted to watch this with, with all you guys. A previous video that I watched, it was a documentary, it was called, by Frontline, it was called League of Denial. And I really enjoyed it. It was scary, but I enjoyed it. And so I think I'm gonna enjoy this too. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Right, so just before we do get into this, I just want to read the description. Newsday explores why so many former NFL players struggle while transitioning to life after football in the special report. Hear from former players including Wesley Walker, Boomer Esiason, Bruce Harper and more. Wesley Walker was one of my first ever reactions. I know he was a slot receiver. Boomer Esaison, I feel like he was in the top 100 greatest players of all time, but I can't remember exactly who he is. Bruce Harper, no idea. It's 23 minutes long. Sit back, relax, let's, you know, sadly learn about the downfalls, the pitfalls of, of life after football. Unless, unless they're talking about the positive side of it, I'm not sure. Let's go. Life in football is unbelievable. The excitement that is generated from knowing that you're going to go play in front of at least 70,000 fans. And if you're on a good team, Boomer. and you're playing against another good team in their building, there you just know that the intensity is going to be ratcheted up. Man, that reminds me of, um, reminds me of Hard Knocks. No, not Hard Knocks, it's um, Last Chance You. Absolutely amazing program. Torn ligaments in my neck. Near Tony Gonzalez. Placement. Broken collarbone. Wrist sprains. Herniated disc in my back. Ankle sprains. I broke my thumb. That's not Tony Gonzalez. <laughs> twice. You can bend my knee just like this, it could move. I played in the NFL for 15 seasons. I played. Well, maybe it is. Played 10 years in the National Football League. Played six years in the. Well, that. I'll tell you what. Well, I'll tell you what, that guy looks like Aaron Donald's dad. Ten years in the National Football League. Played six years in the National Football League. I've had uh, knee surgeries on both my knees, my ankles, my elbows, my shoulders, my back. I broke my leg. 
Fuck man, I just talked about the mental aspect of it. What about coming out of football with no help, no support, and having all these physical elements as well? <sighs> Cannot be easy. In my first year in 71. You know, look guys, I'm gonna tell you right now that I feel blessed to have got through a sporting career, I guess, um, with no major injuries, touch wood. So that means at age 29, even though I am just 29, a couple of weeks ago, well, actually a month ago, I feel as though my body is as healthy as that of an 18 year old. You know, I, I've never had any knee reconstructions, no ankle surgeries, no pec tears, no bicep tears, nothing. I've had a torn adductor, but that was due to my own doing. And that was going way too deep on a shitty leg press with a crap angle that wasn't suited to my body. And that's one thing I will say guys, is that not every leg press is suited to your body. So maybe you shouldn't use it. A squat on the other hand is a lot more, I guess, um, well it just suits a lot more people. You still have a lot of work to do for former players. I broke my leg in 72. The cost of trying to provide health care for every player that's ever played in the league. Trauma that comes and does not appear until 10, 20, 15 years later. We will continue to make more efforts. There's a price to be paid for playing in the NFL. And now I'm paying the price. You know, I thought I was Superman when I played. And now I discovered kryptonite. <laughs> it's called retirement. When I was playing, we did not call them concussions. We come to the sideline and we get the little smelling salts. And Okay, get back in. How many f Have you guys ever tried smelling salts? Because I haven't. But if they work that well, I mean, that's that's almost a small miracle. Fingers do I have up. I can't remember a player being taken out of a game for being concussed. And I had teammates who couldn't remember plays, who played, who were dinged. And finally dinged so much they couldn't play anymore. It depends on how we're going to define concussion. Is it just literally getting your bell rung? Because there's a while What makes me sick is if a guy clearly is concussed and goes back into the game. I saw that on Last Chance You, believe it or not. We just talked about it. I saw it on Last Chance You. I saw that, that guy King. Uh, was it Marquette? can't remember but it was the wide receiver on the last the last season of of last chance you and I mean after he got one of his head knocks he was sitting on the sideline he, he couldn't even get up to to walk to the sheds you know it was it just it really made me sick to watch and so head knocks and guys who aren't aware of the danger of the head knocks and, and will just you know throw them back in back into the game that's just really really worrying my career, I didn't think I was playing hard enough unless my bell was ringing. Yeah, that's, fuck, that's insane. But it is football. You've got this helmet on, you're going to run straight into someone else, you're going to get your bell rung. And I guess, if you don't, it's sort of like, it's sort of like if, the, if, if someone come, comes off a rugby field and they don't have any dirt on their uniform, it's like, did you even play? Well, it seems on a football field, if you didn't get your bell rung, did you even play? And this is not Tony Gonzalez, <laughs> this is Chad Brown. Um, or are we talking about actually being physically knocked out when you have lost consciousness? Because then, you know, there's six or seven or ten or a dozen times where that has happened to me as well. That's a worry. I don't think anybody is positive how many concussions they've had, but um, I've probably had two or three in my day. When I would hand the ball off and I would watch a guy go into the pile, what you hear and what you see you wonder how guys are coming out of that. It sounds like a, a, a car accident. It was a game that when the whistle blew, it was hand-to-hand -hand combat all over the field. Crazy thing is, is that if a player at the top of the game gets a concussion, a genuine concussion, they don't want to tell anyone. Why would they want to tell anybody? All that's going to do is create media attention and possibly have a negative effect on the rest of their career. <laughs> People get, get concussions, they get injured, they don't want anyone to know. That's, that's what's backwards about this whole thing, isn't it? It's really the hard. The axiom that we live by was that any man can play football, but it takes a real man to play football when he is injured. That always was problematic to me. That's fucked up, man. Most people think that guys get hurt only in games. Oh my god. Anyone can play football, but it takes a real man to play football when he's injured. <laughs> What do you guys think about that? But there's all these practices. There's way more practices. There's almost five times as many practices that you have than you have games. 
per week. And a lot of things happen there and it wear and tears your body down. When I injured my knee initially, I was playing at a very high level. So I said to myself, I don't want to get an MRI. I don't want to know exactly what it is as long as I can play. And there you go. Lots of people lined up to take this dangerous job. Um, towards the end of my career, I was making pretty good money. Four or five times what a rookie would make. And anything that holds me, holds me out from playing the game is a threat to my job security. When you're young. Bro, that's it. That's exactly what I was saying. They don't want to tell anybody. They want to say, yep, everything's sweet. Yep, keep paying me my money. All good. But really, they're not. And you're trying to establish yourself and you want everybody to know that you're... Especially in those first few years, if you're on your rookie contract, you ain't going to tell nobody about nothing. Strong and you're tough. You definitely shy away from reporting injuries because you're going to get ridiculed. You're going to be called a soft guy. Uh, they used to have this saying that you can't make the club in the tub, things like that. There's one sign in the New England Patriots training room. Durability is more important than ability. That's a very slogany way of saying, Wow. Have your butt on the field every Sunday. So. Wow. <laughs> I think every player in the NFL has injuries that they don't report. Or every NFL team definitely has players that they know have injuries that they don't report. I can't run anymore. My knees have a little arthritis in them, but I feel very fortunate because uh, some of my teammates, uh, some of the guys I played with, they're no longer living or they're having chronic uh, problems, medical problems. They're unemployable. It's a difficult situation for me. Newsday surveyed more than 7,000 former NFL players in conjunction with the NFLPA's former players division in December 2013. 763 so that's just over 10 percent responded 11 percent responded and 42 percent of that 11 percent said the injuries from their playing days are the biggest challenge they face in their daily life i wonder if that is the same in rugby You've got to wonder. You've got to wonder. We just don't have we don't we don't have enough documentation. We don't have documentaries such as this looking at ex rugby players. I mean, have we had rugby players from the past donate their brains? I'm not sure. The NFL was it was a wonderful experience. When you're playing, you're exerting yourself completely. Even the pain and the and the working with your teammates. I mean, I felt like I was really alive. Hmm. I mean, I was completely running alive. back. You don't get into this game thinking safety. You get into this game because you're so cocky. You believe you can do it better than anybody else. You know, it's never going to happen to me that I get hurt. I think the worst part is after it's over and you have the pains and the, and the injuries that you never thought were going to come. So he's saying it's more physical, but I'm thinking, man, it's got to be mental. It has to be. Combined with physical injuries. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Never ever being, like knowing that you're never ever going to be able to recreate that feeling that you had, as well as dealing with these physical injuries. I don't know. Having played professional football, one of the things that, that is forever is uh, the relationships with the guys. And we live together cried together, lost together, and I can't help but think about one of my favorite teammates, um, Wesley Walker. We're Jet teammates for eight years, and we're, we're friends forever. I really feel for him. You know, he's suffering a little bit now. Is he? With the... Is he? Injuries of dementia, Lou Gehrig's disease, um, uh, it's kind of scary. As, as a oh my God, oh my God, I completely got this wrong. <laughs> I thought it was Wesley Welker that they were talking about, but it's not. It's Wesley Walker, and I feel like I've actually seen this before. Going to play it down the road, what? Well, I've definitely seen this guy before. Might uh, could happen. I have so much arthritis, and there are some days and that I have a problem walking, functioning. I'm embarrassed of what my body looks like now. If I'd warm up, for instance, with 225 pounds, that's my warm up weight. I'm lucky enough if I could probably lift the bar right now. I have this atrophy. I, I'm starting to look like a skeleton in this, just this right hand alone. If 
but I have this throughout my body. I don't have the desire or the wherewithal to want to work out, and, and that's, that's my really goal. Maybe I need to retire from teaching and just focus on just rehabbing my body, but I don't even have the energy to, when I come home after working, uh, to do anything. I know that I can't do certain things with my hands, like even just a simple twisted off a, a bottle cap that I struggle with. I used to run over to my neighbors just to button my top button because I struggle with buttoning shirts and, and when you're in a hurry and you're trying to get to a function, it's very f frustrating. And there's been times where I almost, I'm crying, I'm sweating, you know, just trying to get help. And I've gone to the bathroom and I can't even wipe myself with my hand. That's very frustrating. So something's going on, trying to figure out what it is and can it be improved? That's the big question. Heroes and Cool Kids, we started it uh, Seems to be taking it pretty well. In 1998, it's like a three-tiered mentoring program. We have former professional athletes train high school students to be mentors to fifth or sixth grade kids. It has been successful. It's working just great. It's really the best thing I have ever done in my life. My memory is not good. My, I make my wife so mad, my business partner. I feel, I feel almost incapable of really, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not what I used to be. I have been knocked out on three occasions on the football field. I remember one time I tried to uh, catch a very short and high punt, trying to make uh, an impression on the team. And I should have called a fair catch. But I, I caught the ball, and as soon as I caught it, you know, I got smacked and just, uh, I was out for that one. And I remember I had the ball tucked away, and I remember when I woke up, there was no ball there, but my arm was still in the position like I was holding the ball. You know, it was, it was just weird. That is weird, and that's the thing, man. No one, no one knows exactly what's going on with this whole thing about concussion, man. You know, everyone's symptoms, uh, you know, post, post incident are all different. I mean, I heard so many stories in that documentary that I watched about certain symptoms, not being able to see bright light, uh, headaches, unable to remember what happened. Guaranteed, he doesn't remember that catch. There's no way. I have had concussions. And did you play right after them? Of course. I, I have never had a concussion, guys. Touch wood, I've never had one. So I honestly don't know what it feels like. Oh yeah. The first one I just got up and ran off the field, came back like nothing happened. I, I don't think any player makes it through playing eight years in the NFL without getting a concussion at least once or twice. See I think you might, you might get away with three, maybe five, maybe even ten. But can you imagine that? Massive blows to the head, time after time after time. It's going to do something. Certainly, you don't make it through eight years without being injured some kind of way. So it's a tough, brutal sport. It is. I look back on my career the last three years, and I really got lucky. Almost went paralyzed on the football field, practice field, and to have a club want to sign a waiver so they won't be liable. Did you sign the waiver? Yes, I did. And that's a chance that I took. And I have to look at myself as being one of the most stupidest persons on earth. I'm very lucky that I'm sitting here talking to you today uh, and not in a wheelchair or dead or from a broken neck. My wife is a nurse. When she saw us playing, she saw Joe Klecko with a cast on his, his hand. He, she could not believe he was out there playing with a broken whatever it was on his hand. And it's stupid, common sense, you know, normal life it's stupid it's ridiculous you should not be out playing with a broken hand there's a whole lot of life you know after football there's, there's a whole lot of life that's much more important than football we have outgrown our capacity to take on those kind of shots we're just too strong too fast too big and it's just not safe you know they it's can a different try game. to do things with their helmets it's not, they're not going to stop the concussions. There's no way if you're running at whatever miles an hour and, and another guy's coming in the same direction, there's no way you're going to stop the brain from jarring. And I think about Junior Seau. 
and all the guys that committed suicide. People have no idea how it feels to go through life with a, 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 a constant state of confusion. Stuff that just won't go away. It's horrible. When I get up, at it's bloody hard to explain. In the morning, and I can't even function, and I feel like my legs are giving out, and thinking about having more surgery, and the culmination of everything together. You know, you're trying to reach for answers, trying to figure out what's the best way to really attack this situation. So that's where I'm at right now, and I uh, hope I can find a cure, which is not out there, but at least to try to manage my pain and some of the injuries that I do have that are getting worse. Fuck, all I care about, I, I just hope he's got enough money to support this, you know what I mean? Hope he's not broke. Eighty-five percent feel the NFL has not adequately prepared them for life after football. The hardest thing to realize when you get out of the game is the fact you don't get any more freebies. You don't get any more checks picking up. Big Charles Evans. Like people you don't know. Guys are, Big fullback. They know who you are. Uh, you don't sign any autographs. Uh, nobody wants you. I finally found a job uh, that I really loved, and it was uh, Hertz Rental Equipment. That was the only time that I was making enough money to buy a house. So I bought a house, a brand new house. They were done in January 18th of 02. And February 18th of 02, I had a massive stroke. So I had to, I had to give up my house. That, that was the hardest thing I ever had to do. Those difficult stories, um, is they're, they're real people, real real hurt, and a real opportunity to to assist a, a, a man and his family. There's so many challenges uh, that players face that the average fan just they don't know about, and, and maybe they don't care. My first reaction is generally sadness because I I think of the the personal torment this person has been through. This is crazy. How is this guy defensive end? Um, to be on a, a very high mountain. Actually, no, that's not a defensive tackle. It's not a guard, not a tackle, but a defensive end. Um, during their NFL career, where we get to play uh, you know, in front of millions, that's a, a long, long, steep slope to go down. And, and I'm, I'm very sad for these guys. My role with the NFL now is I work to assist um, current former players with resources um, around um, professional development, educational uh, opportunities. They have a hard time reimagining themselves uh, outside of the uniform. When you're in the NFL, you're always in the limelight. The light's always shining on you, whether you're the, the best player on the team or, or just a guy on, on the roster. Somebody out there knows who you are. Yeah. See, you see these guys who are actually, you know, absolute superstars in their own right, but they do retire and they do get another career, you know, presented it in front of them. They may have to have a, a certain personality, you know what I mean? If, if, if a football player, four or five years in the league, no personality, there's no chance. But if you do have a personality, you do sort of make yourself known throughout your career, I think, I guess, you see these guys... They're only the top players, aren't they? The ones that do get this, you know, sports casting sort of career. And you think, you kind of think that's what happens to every ex-player. But clearly it's not. You know, Mark McGuire, great baseball player. Barry Bonds. They can go to a batting cage with a stack of quarters and still feel the swing of the bat. When football's over, it's over. You never, ever, ever play again. There's no old man games at the park. You know what I mean? There's no, there's no rec league football. There will be no time in the... That's interesting because in rugby, there is old man games at the park. And there is rec leagues. Rest of your life unless you become like a... So that's just sad. ...or a rock star. That you're going to be able to have 65,000 people jump to their feet at something that you do. 
It's a great feeling. It's awesome. There's nothing else like it in life. Let's go! Nah, man. I can't imagine they would be. The addiction to that feeling, that takes time to wean off of that. The emotional part is much more difficult to cut off. And it literally is just a cut off process. One day you're a football player and the next day you're not. And you never get to do it again. You never strap those pads on. Last time you hung them up, they don't ever come back on again. They're done. 80% of NFL players. That's hard, man. Doesn't matter what you say, that is tough. Within two years of um, their last season, they're either bankrupt, divorced, or unemployable. Who's this? How many? 80% of NFL players. With 80%? Are you sure about that? In two years of um, their last season, they're either bankrupt, divorced, or unemployable. That's tragic. The problem with players is that... That is absolutely tragic, all right? That we kind of think playing is going to last forever. And you can understand why. Because, you know, when you're 22 to 29, you're not really thinking straight. You're making a ton of dough. You're living the life. So you think it's going to go on forever. You really do, especially when you're in those successful years. When we signed that NFL contract, we knew there was nothing at the end. We all knew that. If you think of football as who you are opposed to what you do transition is tough mm. about year six in the league they started calling me the old dude in the locker room mm -hmm. and so you know when you're getting called the old dude in the locker room it's probably time to start mm -hmm. working towards something else and it was around that same time that i started working on a master's degree in counseling from the outside looked like i put some pieces in place um, you know, I had a had a, a, an additional degree, was working right away out of the game, but I, I struggled, you know, I struggled big time. Of course, Twelve man. years later. Of course. And I still struggle. Uh, I'm, I'm still transitioning. Uh, Tw but I, Twelve years later, guys, he's still, still in that transition period. I'm a lot more confident in my direction uh, of where I'm going now. Or they just need to be 110% comfortable with not being a player anymore. You know what I mean? And a guy like Primetime is completely comfortable in not being a player anymore. But that's because he's Primetime. Even this guy Boomer, he's got his own show. Killing it. He's happy. He's happy not being a player. Or maybe he's not. Maybe he's just showing. Maybe he's just portraying that. But I mean, at least he's got... I don't know, at least he's got a bit of an identity. These guys who, who aren't the superstars, who come and go, fuck it, it'd be hard. I think the NFL gets a bad rap, due in large part to you know, the former NFL players that aren't set up for success and sad. Because I, you know, playing all those years in the league, I know that I had former teammates that uh, are not successful today and are probably in, physically in some pretty bad shape because of the game that they loved and they played. On the same hand, I know of even more of my teammates that are successful because they played in the NFL and because they handled their money right and their personal lives right. And that's always the rub. You know, where does the personal responsibility come in and where does the, the league responsibility or the team responsibility come in? It's hard when it's a close friend of yours or a teammate and, you know, there's nothing you can really do to, to warn them. And uh, I always say for guys that go down the wrong path on that front, it's not that they make poor decisions, they make poorly. Former Colts quarterback Johnny Unitas fled for, filed for bankruptcy after the city of Baltimore refused to repay a portion of an outstanding loan it guaranteed. Unitas, a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and his wife Sandra filed for protection from creditors. Dual Corporation continue operating while in bankruptcy. Unitas did so in order to go through an orderly repayment of his creditors. So, Johnny Unitas, Pro Football Hall of Fame, bankrupt informed decisions and I look at that as a big challenge to what I'm doing now is to get the right information to guys so they make well-informed decisions given the right information uh, football players were smart enough to figure it out why wouldn't you want to hire a football player why wouldn't you want to hire somebody that has those virtues of football built within them all after all those years the responsibility of being there on time it's just like getting a degree well most of them will have a degree from college football you know it's that degree, it's not necessarily related to the job description, but it's just showing that they have the ability to concentrate, you know, to, to study. 
to be part of a team, to turn up on time, just like he said. You know, somebody who works well with others, somebody who, who can communicate. There are a lot of reasons why you would want to hire those football players, and that's why those guys are all successful. The job I have right now probably wouldn't have hired me if I wasn't a former NFL player. Go. I'm a personal trainer, and I love my job. I enjoy helping people. And every day I'm, I'm helping people, whether it's a 60-year-old woman losing weight or a 17-year-old high school Six. athlete getting ready for Seven. college. I get probably three emails a week. That's really cool, man. That's really cool. You're doing a great job. About opportunities for post-NFL players. Whether I reply back to those emails or whether I read those emails becomes my choice. I think every player in the NFL gets those same opportunities post-career. Unfortunately, some of the players don't accept that help. Um, they don't seek that help. But the, the NFL itself, I feel, does a lot to, to help retired players transition. Let me just look something up, man. I've wanted to look this up for a while. What is the average NFL career in length? According to the NFL Players Association, this was published last year, the average career of an NFL player is 3.3 years. The players left the NFL for a variety of reasons. These include injury, retirement, and being cut by their team. 3.3 years, guys. And if you're in there on a rookie contract, depending on your position, you might get what eight million less tax what's that four million and you're done four million it doesn't last that long try to get them jobs try to put them in different programs try to give them other opportunities is it perfect nothing in this world is can it improve yes has it improved it, it continues to improve being a former player we're real life uh, examples for for these guys that have walked the walk, worn the boots, been in the locker room, understand the environment, understand the culture. And, and that peer-to-peer -peer model uh, can open the door to getting guys to, to take a look. You know, we, we, we open the door a little bit and they're more apt to take a look because we look like them. We're fighting for our brothers. Um, and, and What's this guy's name again? In any way that we can. We were the game. We were everything. We made it all happen. When we're out there, we're, it's us. So when, if the industry is gonna generate that kind of money, why shouldn't the product be a part of the benefit, reap the benefits? Take care of me, please. If I, if I end up in a nursing home, I don't want my wife and my children to be burdened with, with, the, with the bills and everything that comes with that. Well, that's just life, brother. We are supposed to be taken care of. Well, not always are you taken care of by an employer that you only work for for eight years. You know what I mean? An employer is an employer. We should not have to pay one dime. I think most of us would be well. I'm going to save my judgment. I think that these fellas, they earn enough money through their career if they were smart with it. They really would be able to set up, you know, a life after football but I just think the education isn't there but then I also think well they've gone through college you know so surely there's some form of education there going to do it all over again and take all those risks all over again and live the life that we were afforded to live when we actually did play it's part of the game part of what you love part of what you wanted to do and the way I look at it okay what came along, came along. I can't do anything about that. You have no regrets? No. Good. Good to hear, brother. I have no regrets. Good to hear, man. I love hearing that. It was my choice. And I believe you. And if you walked around better, you know, for choices I've made, I couldn't do that. This is what I wanted to do. This is what I chose to do. But the question would be, if you know this was going to happen down the road, would some of these players make the choices or do the things they did? No. Nope. That's a very interesting question. One of the things I know now, there's no way I would do it. 
fuck? He just summed it all up right there. For me personally, shit. I have no regrets. I have memories, trips, pictures, friends that will last a lifetime. And even though the NFL doesn't last a lifetime, I will always be a former NFL player. That's a shitload more than most of us. Eighty-nine percent said they would do it all over again. Well, there you go. That's 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 a big statement, man. Big statement. Fuck, that's a big statement. Damn, because all of these guys, seven hundred and sixty-two players, they actually responded out of seven thousand. Eleven percent. I don't know how many percent of them said that they were still their, their biggest challenge in life is. The injuries that they incurred through their football career but then again 90% of those 700 people said that even with all of these ailments they'd still do it all again and at the end of the day the glory the fame the adrenaline it's all worth it because these other people these other mere mortals such as myself who never experienced this we don't even know what that's like you know what I mean? So I guess because we haven't had those highs, we don't necessarily have those lows. Now I want to get this fella's name. One of these guys. Wide receiver, tight end. Bernard Whittington, Cal Snowden, Patrick Kearney. Here he is, Dwight Hollier. Okay, so what I wanted to see was what what is his height? Because guys, I want to I want to give you I want to give you you know a little bit of oh it doesn't even have his height. Come on, man, Dwight Hollier height six foot two. Okay, well all right six two. Yep, he's pretty big human. Uh, what I was going to say is that look, it doesn't matter who you are. If you're going to walk in as an advisor to these young rookie NFL players and you're a big man, like with stature, you know, with size, they're going to listen to you. They really are. They're young enough. They're going to, they're impressionable. They're going to listen to you. He's 6'2". I thought he'd be like 6'6". I don't know. It's a bit different, but you know, maybe, maybe I'm not going to be able to say what I was going to say. But look, all of you fellas, you're doing a fantastic job. Fantastic. And this is three years ago. Right, we're going to call it a day there, guys. Um, I think we've seen enough. This video is probably going to go for about 40 minutes. And I've had a whole lot of fun today, man. I've had so much fun these last four days doing reaction after reaction after reaction, watching all the stuff that I've wanted to watch over this past year. And I've done it because I'm under pressure. And I perform best under pressure. It is what it is. You know what I mean? It is what it is. So I'm going to have fun editing all these over the next few days. This is the second to last video. We've got one more. And it is Christian McCaffrey in college. Christian McCaffrey's got to be one of my favorite players. One of my top three players at the moment. Leonard Fournette. Saquon Barkley and Christian McCaffrey. So we're going to do that in the next video. I really hope you enjoyed that video, guys. I certainly did. I'm, you know, not only getting involved in, in, in the players and their, their highlights and stuff like that, but I, I do want to not get involved, but at least have a grasp on, on what's happening on the back end. And that's exactly what we got there. So that was a fantastic documentary. I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know down in the comment section below. If you want to support this channel, support me. If you like the video, hit the like button. That helps out a hell of a lot. If you want to subscribe, please do. If you don't want to subscribe, that's fine. But please like the video because at the end of the day, if I put up another video and you've liked it before, it's probably going to show up on your news feed. So with all that being said, I want to say have a fantastic festive season and I'll see you in 2020. Peace out, everybody. I swear I like your style
what you in Chanel cause it's just perfect for your smile Girl I swear for you I run the world, I run the mile The way you look at me I think I'm going insane Wow, yeah, swear to God I'm with it I don't see nobody in my lane, it's quite go get it Like me, wow Please don't be wasting my time with that business Who are you kidding man, yeah, 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 yeah I've been up and working till the morning, yeah, yeah. They've been sleeping now, I swear they storming, yeah, yeah. And I swear I'm cooking like a foreman, foreman. Uh, and my foreman jumping like it's Jordan on my way. Vroom, vroom, tell them I'm my lane. I've been praying, yeah, yeah. Gotta say this thing, I'm the same. I don't need another person telling me.